Charles Wilhelm has become known as one of the country's top trainers for both horses and people. His approach to training focuses on educating the horse owner alongside their equine partners so they can form a strong bond and achieve an amazing partnership. Located in Castro Valley, California, Charles practices and teaches his ultimate foundation horsemanship that combines the best of traditional, classic, and natural horsemanship into a package that's perfect for every riding discipline. His extensive background of over 35 years of training includes dressage, working cow horse, reining, western pleasure, and trail class. He's one of the few clinicians of our time who's known for his superb skills in communicating and motivating people, as well as his outstanding natural abilities with the horse. He believes that it's never ever the horse's fault, and his training methods reflect that belief. Welcome to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. this horse turn on the four haunches. Turn around the haunches. Yeah, all right, so just walk him off a little bit. And so you walk a big circle around me, like 20 feet, all right? As you walk this circle, keep the forwardness and ask him to bring his shoulders two steps left. Kind of a turn on the haunches. Yep, I I'll take that. But do you see that you did that in forward motion? You never lost forward motion. And so, all right, turn him again and halt. So when you ask him, so he's doing a bigger circle with the shoulders than the haunches. It's not technically maybe a turn on the haunches, but so you're using your outside leg, right? So what you kind of want to do is reward him in two steps so that he learns that he moves his shoulders off of your leg. If you do a real big move, he learns to turn on the haunches. I need to connect him to my leg and seat aids and hand aids so that later on I can send him to my hands and he can soften and rotate his pelvis and create some impulsion so he will get, you see how he shakes his head all the time? He is so rigid in his neck. If you touch the bridle, he doesn't know how to take the energy through his body to the hind legs, so he fights with his head. Another thing, uh, you know, you can do leg eels. Anything that you would teach a normal horse that teaches lateral bend is important. Because what he's got to learn to do, you, we see how he twists his hocks when he turns. You saw that on down there. He twists his hocks because he doesn't know how to take his inside hind leg and step underneath his center of gravity, his center line, when he turns right and left. That's because he's been held back and compressed. So you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time putting him in lateral bends on a soft rein and encouraging him with your inside leg to step underneath himself with his hind leg. Like you could just walk a small circle, just walk a small circle right around me. All right, just play with your inside rein. Ask him to tip his nose and like lengthen or put a little bit of inside leg on. Now do you feel that you're bringing his shoulders a little bit left and now take his hips a little bit right, like that. So you're kind of turning him so he keeps his, uh, now do you feel that his spine is out of alignment right now? Yeah, yeah it's stiff, isn't it? Because he's over bent himself at the base of his neck and his rear end's coming in. So he over bends here, so now his spine is out of alignment. In order to get engagement of the hind end, we have to realign his spine, all right? So if I walk him off, you walk him off. All right, you ask him to do just what you just did. His back is stiff right now, isn't it? But if I move his hips out so that they're on the same circle as the front end, there, 
he releases his back. Did you feel that? I did. I tell him I'm not making this up. You're not so making it up. he he released his back to you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. All you did was teach him to align his spine. But see, when we pull on the inside rein to turn them, it makes them overbend a little bit at the base of the neck. Now he's out of alignment. Now he can't use his hind end and engage him. But see, when you got him to bend consistently from his ears to his tail, he immediately relaxed his back, didn't he? So now all the energy can flow from your hands to the hind end and create engagement. And uh, that would create gait. But think about this. Too often we spend time trying to make our horses gait. So we get their back in a bind and get all this tension. So the, that would mean that we're teaching the horse to gait strictly for my benefit, with no concern of the horse's welfare. I want the horse to understand that I am also training him for his benefit. I believe that if you start making the horse believe that I'm training you for your benefit too, he will get more involved in the training and training will go twice as fast if he can see the benefit in it. So if you work, do lateral work and you unlock his back, he immediately felt more relaxed and comfortable. So if you did that for him, he might think you're actually sitting up there looking out for him. If we could make him believe that when you ride, you're looking out for him, he wouldn't have to be buddy sour or spook or barn sour because he's only buddy sour because you don't offer him the security that his buddy's offering. Now, if you, can, if you can teach him to turn loose in the atlas and relax up here and relax in his back and at the withers, you, you will be able to access the energy of the hind end and create gait. Plus, you're gonna have a horse that thinks you're looking out for his security and he's gonna be with you. We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. One other thing that you could do, because we don't want to just work in the arena, but trail riding, lots of transitions would create longitudinal flexion. Also, if you do lots of transitions and you're a trail rider, doing transitions teaches your horse that you control speed. You don't believe this, but trail riders have a tendency to sit on their horse and go down the trail and not pay attention to them until they need something. I believe it. But, you know, I would spend like 10 or 15 minutes of every trail ride doing transitions. Like I would have him walk as fast as he can walk without gating, walk as slow as he can walk without stopping, fast as you can walk without gating, slow as you can walk without stopping. Lots of transitions within the gate. That makes him increase range of motion and it makes him more supple. And we also wanna do from walk to gait to walk to gait. A lot of people think if they do transitions every 20 or 30 feet, they're working on transitions. Not so. Here's, here's working on transitions. So you take him out on the circle. And this horse is also unresponsive to the legs, isn't he? You have to kick and beg and plead to get him to go. So he doesn't know what the leg aids mean. He just let, he thinks you just bully him. All right, leg him up to the slowest gait he can do. And I don't care if it's trot, pace, I don't care what it is. The slowest gait he can do. Because we're trying to teach speed control and impulsion to create gait. Can't get him to go, can you? Nope, back, to, close your fingers, ride him forward to your hands to take him back to walk. Forward, forward, good. Now, do you feel he just softened his face? Yes, because you, you rode the downward transition forward. A lot of people, they just say walk, uh, and they quit riding. When you do that, that lets the horse fall on his shoulders. But you rode him into your hands, and he softened, right? You rode the downward transition forward, all right? Leg him up to the, and he doesn't go up when you ask him, does he? So he needs to get more responsive, all right? Back to walk, ride him softly forward to your hands. Let him take his time coming down. There, see him soften his face? So we're creating 
softness through the body, which would create impulsion. Leg him up. He'll get more responsive to your legs. So you have to beg him to get him go. Back to walk. So we're going to go 10 minutes down the trail. Leg him up. Back to walk. Leg him up. Back to walk. And that's an explosion right there. So he didn't leave with a good departure. That's an explosion. You could say, well, that explosion doesn't scare me. But that's the explosion you got when he's not on adrenaline and he's where he feels safe. What's going to happen when he gets on adrenaline out on the trail? We got to get rid of that. Because if he explodes like that, he's on the forehand. We've got to have slow accelerations to make sure he's on the haunches. Leg him up. Back to walk. He's getting more responsive to being legged up, isn't he? Because you're using the aids a lot. So you're kind of explaining and you're not punishing him with the aids. Leg him up. He's getting softer, isn't he? I just heard him change the way he breathes. Back to walk. Ride him forward softly to your giving hands. Don't pull. Catch him and ride him back down. Yep, that was good. Leg him up. You have to beg him, don't you? Back to walk. So collection or impulsion is never going to happen if it's that hard to get a horse to go up. So doing transitions, also the upward transition creates impulsion. So we can take a pacey horse like this, and if we rode transitions for 10 minutes, he would start to offer gait because he's getting softer from the downward transition, and he's learning to create upward impulsion. So in the beginning, when you leg him up, he might gait two or three steps and then fall back to pace. You leg him up, two or three steps, but we, could be, we would be better off building on the two or three good steps over time than trying to make him gait a whole lot today because we'd pay the price later on. All right, ask him to walk the biggest walk he can do without gating. And if he goes up the gate, don't punish him. Just ride him back to walk he's, because he's trying. All right, now, ride him into your giving hands and ask him to soften and ride him as slow as he'll walk without stopping, without holding him. Ride him into your soft giving, good. Now leg him up to the fastest gait he can do, or walk he can do, I'm sorry. Good. Now, don't hold him back to slow him down. Your hands catch him and they're giving and ride him into your hands to get the slowest walk you can get. Feeling softening? Yep, but if you, if you try to make him slow down, he would brace and get hard. Biggest walk you can get. We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter as us, you and I, educating people. I, I think that's and, true. And I think that <clears throat> you're the first gated horse trainer willing to acknowledge that it's, you don't have to be a gated horse trainer uh, to train your horse. Just a good horseman. Just a good horseman and, uh, you know, understanding, you know, what aids are and how to educate and make it clear. Yep. Um, anything else that comes to your mind that we, we need to know about? I just, I just would like to see the people in the gated world create gait from softness and relaxation instead of Mu the muscle by driving horses right. into the hand. Yeah, that's my goal. Well, that's a pretty big goal. Uh, even for even, I mean, just in the horse industry, you know, uh, we I see that a lot in the dressage world. You know, a lot of dressage horses I get in here, they're so heavy on the forehand, it's unbelievable. Uh, and they're supposed to be upper level horses, and uh, and they get hung up on the goal, but the quality of the gate is not there. They they're kind of going through the movement, yep. but the quality is not there. So when they score, you know, it's not going to be there. So I, I can really see what you're saying is 
just a, a good recipe for just good horsemanship. That's it. All right, another thing that you can do with him to create, get, do the softest stop you can get. do. Close your fingers, ride him into your soft giving hands, and ride him to a very soft halt. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. It needs to be soft. He really pushes on the bridle, doesn't he? The fact that he pushes so hard on the bridle means I'm gonna have to drive him harder into my hands to get him to gate. Well, I don't wanna do that to my horse because I, I don't want my horse twisting his hocks and locking his back like this guy does. You know, I can't, I'm too old to have to train a new horse every five years. If I train one, I want it to last 20 years, all right? Now, when you ride him forward, you'll open your fingers and they're open. Your calves come on and your pelvis says leave. All right, ask him softly. So can you feel that he left from the hind end? He picked the saddle up, he lifted the saddle. And this horse needs to learn that transitions are made from the hind end. When we kick them and try to drive them into gate and they have that little explosion that he has, it's, they're always gonna leave on the forehand. So even from halt to walk, we could teach him transitions up are all made on the hind end. All right, halt him. All right, now you put your leg on, I think, too hard to ask him to go, but you did it because that's what it takes to get him to go, doesn't it? But I don't, but now he's telling you how to train. You put your legs on as soft as you can and your seat says go. And if he doesn't go, touch him with your whip there. All right, open your fingers a little. Calves come on, get light and roll your pelvis forward. And he doesn't go, does he? Don't hit him that hard. Halt him. See, one, one reason that he doesn't go when you leg him, well, and he's been kicked so much that now he just doesn't even pay attention to legs. So I don't want to keep kicking hard the rest of his life. I want to teach him what my legs mean. And we need him to learn that your calves mean engage those hind legs. So if you kick him, he doesn't engage him. He falls on the forehand. So you're gonna put him on softly. Your seat says, let's go forward. If he doesn't, touch him with the whip. Have it ready. Okay. And, uh, I, and we're gonna work on this. We need to make this horse more responsive to the calves because if he's this unresponsive to the calf, how are you ever gonna get him collected and get impulsion? I mean, he, he just get what you put your calves on, he gives you the finger. Mm -hmm. So there's no chance of collection. All right, ask him to go. There, now he left from the hind end. Did you feel that? Yes, he did. Halt him, give him the aids to halt. So he doesn't stop good either. He pushes through the bridle, doesn't he? And so now when, when we stop him hard, we're messing ourselves up for collection because we're creating a braced horse. So ride him into your soft hands, your seat takes him into your hands, catches him and stops him. So does he, he doesn't need to learn to stop or go. What he needs to learn is what you do when you want him to stop and what you do when you want him to go. Then those aids will also transfer over to when we're asking for collection or impulsion to create gait. Get him the aids to go. Get him the aids to halt soft. So we won't let him go far so he won't build up a lot and it's easier to give him the aids to go. Give him the aids to halt. And I would trail ride this horse two days, 20 minutes. I probably wouldn't get to the top of that hill. This would be all he would do for two days. He would learn what my aids mean so that I can use them when I'm creating impulsion and collection. Give him the aids to go. He left from the hind end, didn't he? Give him the aids to halt. Anybody can teach this. My grandmother can ride this. Give him the aids to go. And this is invaluable to teaching horses. Give him the aids to halt. Have to pull a lot. Give him the aids to go. Wiggle the left rein, get his attention back on the circle. Good. Give him the aids to halt. 
And then if, if you worked on this, let's say 10 or 15 minutes, two days, then I would like give him the aids to go, give him the aids to halt, sometimes give him the aids to back up a step, ask him to back. All right, open your fingers, calves on, give him the aids to go. Close fingers, give him the aids to halt, no calf. Seat and hands, aids to back up a step. No calf, hands, seat, ask. Give him the aids to go forward. Give him the aids to halt. Give him the aids to back up a step. Give him the aids to go forward. Give him the aids to halt. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. So if I, sometimes I get a horse that runs away or gets very hard in the bridle, I might ride them for 15 minutes out on the trail two or three days in a row, they get soft as butter, stopping and backing. So if I can start getting them soft through their body, then I can start getting the hind end more engaged. Then I can get my horse to gait in a snaffle or any piece of equipment. I don't need a big piece of equipment or a lot of muscle to get my horse to gait. But the most important thing is I'm taking care of the things that my horse needs to know not just taking care of making him gait, which is what I want. He, he's not gonna lose one minute's sleep tonight if he doesn't gait today. Do you understand? All right. We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Well, Larry, I found that very interesting. Uh, yep. It sounds like a recipe that we could use on every horse. Yep. I watched some of your shows this morning, you just you do the same thing. It doesn't have to be a gated horse person, just somebody that can Well, I can help tell the that horse. the classical training you had certainly helped, <laughs> didn't it? Yes, sir. It, yeah, and it's helped me a lot, too. The, the idea, too, I saw is that, that you're actually advocating on taking time and patience and not trying to get it done in one time. You know, that horse is, we don't know anything about the horse, but he's got a history of pulling on you, and, and you're not going to fix it in one setting. Yeah, he, what, he didn't create it. He didn't create so it. So it's our job to help him with yeah. it. And it's not going to happen overnight. We can yeah. make an improvement. We actually, yeah. I think we actually made oh, yeah you know, 20, 30, maybe even 30% improvement in him, but for the whole picture, it's gonna take time. Yep. Well, Larry, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You're doing great work, and uh, hope to see you on the trails and a few more of these expos. You know, we're moving on in years now, so yep. you might as well enjoy it. Thanks again. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed watching Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Remember, to find out more about Charles and to see how you can get the most out of your relationship with your horse, visit Charles online at charleswilhelm.com. Once again, we hope you've enjoyed the program and we'll see you next week for another episode of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. <laughs>